What up, what up? Wimbush here. Thank you guys for joining me for part two of this series. This time we're going to jump into X particles, but during the break, I went over and actually cached my simulation that we went in through video part one because I was happy with what we did. So if you want to know how to do that, you come over to your dynamics body, your tag over there. Let's bring up an attribute manager. I'm going to click on my tag, then just come over to cache and then just do bake all. And that way it makes our playback play back a little bit better so you see so everything plays back a little bit smoother there and for the tutorial purposes that's good to go so now we're going to get started with x particles so i always like to start with the xp system because it brings up everything over here all organized you have all your different groups it gives you an emitter right off the bat and then it's easy to find our modifiers and everything. So I like starting with the XP system. And before I get started with X particles, I actually want to make an emitter for everything to emit from. So I'm going to go over to our geometry, make a sphere. And then let's bring our sphere down to about 25. And then I'm not sure where to find this in Cinema 4D. I found this whenever I was making my pilot window. But there's this um, this tool called transfer. Now, if I click on my sphere and click on transfer, I can actually bring down my random effector because that's the placement that I want to put it into. And so you have these other attributes down here. You can make it transfer to the move, the XYZ. You can actually make it scale to the same size and you can make it move to the rotation. But for this, I just want to have it move to the area. And so I bring my random effector down I hit apply and you can see my sphere moved into the spot there so let me make this a little bit larger for everybody to see so i'm gonna hit Control z do it again i brought my random effector down you hit apply and it makes it pop into that area but like i said i don't know where to find that up here in the menu so it might be something that you guys just have to google or i can make a another video if you guys like to show how to build the palette window up here but that's a nifty tool that i use a lot so we have our sphere in the same area as our random effector so let's bring our radius down at 15. yeah it should be a good size and now for my xp system let me see control hit five nope that's not gonna work i was trying to do a shortcut for my attribute window oh shift f5 okay so i have my emitter window open here I'm going to start with my object. I'm going to change my emitter shape down to object. And then I'm going to bring my sphere into the object panel. And then for emit from, I want to just use the, <clears throat> excuse me, the polygon area. And then that way, whenever it runs through here, we're actually going to make a trail to follow along our spline here. So this is just a way to fake one part of the movement here to have rocks falling from our wall. And so let's bring this back up. I think that's everything I want to do there. So I'm gonna go over to my mission for my rate. We're actually going to we're going to go to emit all frames, and I want to have it start and stop at a certain frame. I don't want to have it emit in the entire time. So I'm gonna run through my timeline here and kind of see when our random effector starts hitting the wall. So let's say about frame 40. So for my start emitter, come over to 40. And then let's drag through the timeline a little bit more. So let's say around 95. So end emitter at 95. And then for our speed, we're gonna wanna bring down to zero because we want our gravity to control our speed. And then for radius variation, I just bring that all the way up to three to add a little bit of variance in size there. And I think that's going to do it for our emitter on there. So let's play back. And as you can see, it's not doing anything. And that's because we didn't make our sphere the child of our random effector. So all we have to do is left click down under our random. We're going to click and drag it under our random. And now when I hit playback, it's going to follow with our random effector. But if you can see in here, actually, let's do this. So I'm gonna click back on my emitter and I'm just gonna rename this so I don't get confused. XP emitter sphere. 
so I know what that one is. And then I'm gonna click on my display. And for my particle color, let's just change it to something that we can see better. Maybe like the baby blue, North Carolina blue. Then come down the dots and I'm gonna make it in the squares so we can see it better in our viewport. And now let's run playback. And we can see our particles are there, but they're not doing anything. And that's because with X particles, even though we have gravity in our, our scene already for our fracture wall, I think we're gonna to have to use XP's own gravity to control its particles. So we come under motion modifier. Okay, bring this one back up. Okay, so modifiers and then motion modifiers come down to gravity. I'm just gonna leave everything as default. Let's get this out. Actually, let me exit all these other windows out. Okay, cool. So now when I play back, we should start seeing everything fall. Let me run that back again. So you can see our particles are falling, but they're not interacting. And that's because again, X particles has its own system. And so we're gonna have to add a collider tag to our floor. So we have our floor here. We're gonna go up to tags, XP tags, and then make an XP collider. And now whenever we play back, everything should bounce off the ground there. Yep. And then I don't really want it to bounce. So I'm gonna bring, click on my tag here. Okay, so my bounce, I'm gonna bring down maybe like 10. And then my fraction, I'm just gonna bring way up. Then I always like to just add little variants in there. So a bounce variant and my fracture variants, I'm just gonna pull up. Now let's see what happens when we do playback. Yeah, there we go. So everything's falling straight down. I'm not gonna do it for this example, but if you really want to play with the modifiers, adding turbulence and wind and stuff like that, so it's just not so linear, you could do that as you're experimenting. But for this next part here, actually, let me add a tag to my wall as well. So I'm gonna go click my Veroni Fracture. Actually, I could just control. So I'm gonna click on my tag that I made for my floor. I'm gonna hold left control, left click and drag up to Veroni Fracture. And that will make a copy here. And that way, if any particles do hit off the wall, they'll bounce right off. Okay, so I'm gonna control S to save it real quick, save our progress. And now I'm gonna make another emitter because I want, whenever the rocks are actually breaking here, I wanna have some little pieces fall from within the rock as well. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna make another emitter. So I'm gonna click my emitters here, click create emitter. Then I'm just gonna rename this one emitter wall break. All right, so let's set this up. So under my object for emitter shape, we'll click on object and then we're gonna bring our Vereni fracture over. And now underneath you'll see this um, area called selection. What we could do in our Vereni fracture, if I um, select this, if you remember in our last video, when you go to selections, we have all these different selections that we could click. That's how we added the textures to the inside and the outside of the wall. But they have this other one here called surface break edges, which I believe will let us emit from wherever it's cracked from. So I'll click that and you'll see we'll get a selection tag that has um, an open triangle over here. So if I click back on my wall break emitter and then I select this and bring it into my selection, we should start to see it Let's change our display so we can see this one as well. So I'm gonna change this color to red actually. And then our squares again. Now let's run playback and see where our stuff is emitting. And you can see a couple of particles falling down there, but it's not a lot and it's not really what we want. So let's go back to our admission. And the same thing, we're gonna, we're gonna have our start and stop so I believe it started at around 40. 
and for our stop we can have it stop wherever whenever we want so 180 should be fine our lifespan let's have these ones last for 80 with a variance of 80 and then we can bring our birth rate up by one more zero and that reminds me on our other particle emitter let's change our lifespan to about 50 with a variance there actually we do 60 make it last a little bit longer add another zero for more particles and we should be good there and then i'm click back on our wall break for our speed bring it down to zero because we're going to use our xp gravity to control that our variation for our radius bring it up to three and then let's just see how this is playing back now and since we added more particles it's just going to run a little bit slower we have a, a decent trail coming off there but we're not getting the walls or we're not getting the particles coming from the cracks the way we want and there's a reason for that and that's because when we come over to object we want to emit from our polygon area but then there's this other spot down here called object chain i'm not sure exactly what this does but i know when i was experimenting and I put it on connected objects, it was starting to come through a lot more. So let's click playback again. And this make, it makes it go a lot slower because I believe this is what activates it coming through the cracks. So now we can really see them starting to come through the crack areas there. And I know, even though we have it start at frame 40, on our left hand side we start seeing the particles acting even though nothing hit that area yet so we can we can fix that with a fall off so if i click on my xp emitter wall break what was it again shift f5 there we go for our attributes window click on my wall break now let's go over to object fall off and then as always we'll add a box and then this should bring up a green box here yeah so we have a green box here and so basically anything within this green box should should emit the particles so i'm going to run a playback again through a timeline sorry for all the chugging we're starting to add a lot of stuff so it's starting to run a little bit slower but as you can see our particles are now just emitting from where our fall off is so we'll just do it by hand. Let's make this the length of our box because on our endpoint, we're gonna have it the length of the box. We want all the particles emitting. And then we're gonna have it travel along with our, our radius here. So if I look at my top view, I'm gonna bring it all the way over. And then I believe we can go to our coordinates. Let me see which one. Yeah, so our X coordinate here. I'm just gonna make it 575 even. Make this 110 even. So I'm a keyframe at about 40. No. Let's do about 35. So I'm at 35 on my timeline. I'm gonna hit keyframe, run it through our timeline and let's say about 95 let's bring this all the way over so it fills up our box here then i'm gonna keyframe it again let's say eight okay bring this up full screen now let's run playback see what kind of options or let's see what what kind of simulation we get. Yeah, so as we're running through, now our fall off is affecting our wall and they're starting to fall from the cracks in those areas. And then, yeah, so that's basically how we add X particles to our wall break. You know, you could just keep adding the meters in there and you can really customize it to how you want your wall break to be. And then if we want these um, particles to actually be little chunks of rocks, 
it's pretty simple. We could just make a, a sphere. Let's bring our segments down to like five. We don't need anything crazy because they're going to be so small. Yeah, let's keep it at five. So if I, okay, so my segments are five. Let's bring this up here so we can see it. Make our radius really tiny. Actually, we can make our segment seven. And then, so yeah, we have like a radius of three. And now I'm using Redshift. And so this is gonna be Redshift specific. But if I click on my emitters here and go to tags and go down to Redshift, Redshift object. If I bring up my attribute window, let's see under, oh, I gotta click on my tags. Okay, so under particles, Whenever you add like a redshift tag to your particles, you'll get a particle window here. So under mode, we can actually use custom objects and we can drag our sphere into this area. And then our scale multiplier, we can resize it. And let's just click on random. I'm not sure what distribution random does, but let's see what happens when I look at this in our, our render view here. Yeah, so it makes these really large rocks here, which we don't want. So if we go in there, our scale multiplier, let's say 0.1, see what happens here. See, now we're starting to get different sizes here. Let's say 0 0.01. That's too small. 0 0.05. Yeah, there we go. So that's not too bad. But yeah, so if you want to add make your particles in the little rocks there. That's how you would do that under your redshift tag particles and then custom objects, or you could use like point instances and basically, oh man. All right, well, give me a second and I'll kick right back in. I guess redshift didn't like that. So <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. You know, these things happen, but what can you do? <laughs> but we're done with the tutorial anyway. So make sure you guys come back for part three we're gonna wrap this all up. They're gonna bring a guy in from Mixamo, which is free if you have the Adobe Cloud um, subscription. He's gonna kick the wall. It's gonna to react to the wall, make a break. Our rocks that we just added here with X particles, we're gonna um, add an emitter to those. So instead of just a rock texture, we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna make them glow, just shine against the wall. And then that way I can show you in AOVs how you can export your emitter. And then you can also um, add reflections. You can add depth and all that cool stuff. So whenever you export, you have all that stuff to play with in After Effects or Nuke or whatever you guys like to use. So thank you guys again for watching this video. You know, it helps me out. Leave a like button or click the like button. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then um, subscribe. Leave me a comment below if I didn't go over anything that you wanted to see. And then, um, yeah, make sure you guys click over to part three. Yeah.